Now here's the story of a man who just happened to live on a little patch of land. My energy bill is way too high, he thought. So wind turbine making himself, he taught. I can make my own power. The world will see. By his neighbors a basket case he sure was known to be. Hello guys and welcome to a new episode of the post-apocalyptic inventor. Well, it's a new episode, but most of the footage you'll see actually dates back to around 2014 when I still had a lawn where I could experiment with stuff like this. For me, four years are nothing. But for some of you out there, it's maybe an eternity. So let me elaborate what I was trying here back then, what I did and did not accomplish and what this video will show. In 2014, I still lived in an old house with a garden in the back and my energy consumption was really high, mostly due to the lack of insulation of that old house. So I was constantly thinking about possible ways to save, or in this case, generate energy. But since I was really running on a total shoestring budget back then, conventional solutions like solar panels and prefabricated small-scale wind turbines were not an option either. But all around that village I lived in at the time, gigantic new turbines were built by the German company Enercon at the time. Here, for example, you see some footage of the Enercon E101 being erected and 101, that's for 101 meters of rotor diameter, true giants, the likes of which I hadn't seen here before. And let's just say, it really inspired me to try to build my own wind turbines from scrap parts and cheap materials from a home improvement store. Back then I considered this project a failure because I never managed to generate enough energy to be of any meaning concerning my energy bills. But looking back at it now, I feel like it still contained a number of valuable lessons. So let me show what I built back then. I started by building a first very primitive rotor made from these thin pieces of wood that I had found around the house. They were very thin and light, yet still somewhat rugged and I thought that they would be good for an 8-bladed hot or horizontal axis wind turbine, reminiscent of the western style windmills of the old west. And ball bearings for roller blades as well as a steel shaft salvaged from an inkjet printer would be used as well. An old stepper motor from an electric typewriter would act as the generator. We would also need gears to couple rotor and generator together and for that I used RC parts that I had lying around for years. But before going any further I mounted the wooden blades onto an old flywheel salvaged from a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder to see if it would even spin up. But of course this only works as long as the wind would blow in the exact right direction. So a nacelle that would move with the direction of the wind needed to be built. So I proceeded by cutting out parts from scrap aluminium sheets that would form a basic nacelle that various different rotor types could be attached to in order to test them. It wouldn't be aerodynamical at all, but you can't solve all problems at the same time or you will never get anywhere. Then the roller blade bearings were attached and the shaft was inserted. And the rotor and the generator were connected with little gears of the same size. These gears would not have any influence on the rotational speed of the generator. It was just about making the rudder and generator interchangeable. In the first design, the nacelle would then just move around freely on a simple vertical shaft, acting as a primitive yaw bearing. But I later took a caster wheel and used its rather wide ball bearing to connect nacelle and pole. A conductor was then led through the hole in the bearing to lead the plus pole of the generator out of the nacelle. But all that cannot yet be seen in these early pictures. The board, by the way, carries four Schottky diode full wave rectifiers with center tap and four large capacitors all connected in series to reach a generator voltage as high as possible, all the while increasing the internal resistance of the generator which is disadvantageous. Next a tail boom and a vane were connected as well. The boom was just a salvaged aluminium tube and the vane was a piece of plastic from a broken LCD monitor that was left over from one of my DIY projector builds. Even though everything was totally improvised with this first halt, it actually worked very well. But of course the constantly changing wind direction near the house was a problem that often stopped the turbine in its tracks. I then also connected a bunch of LEDs directly to the nacelle that were powered by the internal generator. 
I hadn't figured out yet how to build a proper yaw bearing with slip rings in order to lead the generated current out of the constantly moving enclosure. And while I was satisfied with the overall performance of this rotor so far, I wondered if I could improve it by building a much more sophisticated one. And here is why. The western style windmill was never intended for generating electricity, but for driving a water pump. That job needed a lot of torque, but not as much speed. However, in electricity generation you want to have high speeds. And that is why three or sometimes even two bladed rudders are the norm now. The western style mill has 18 blades, or in my case eight. And the higher the number of the blades, the lower the rotational speed. And the other huge problem with this type of rotor is that it works only on the principle of air resistance and not so much on lift or in German Auftrieb. But basically all modern wind turbines are lift machines or Auftriebsläufer in German. While these primitive older models are resistance machines in German Widerstandsläufer. And in case you're wondering what lift is supposed to be, well you all know the principle, especially from airplane wings where the cross section of the wings is responsible for the airplane being lifted up or pushed up in the first place. And you can use this exact same principle to make wind turbines more efficient as well. This graph shows the maximum possible overall efficiency of any wind converter or turbine. It's naturally limited to a value of around 59% and basically only the best two or three bladed hordes seem to come close to that. While the slow turning western style mill seems to be limited to around 30% of maximum overall efficiency. And that is why I now decided to build rudders more or less according to the aerodynamical profiles I found in the literature concerning this issue. The way I did it was once more limited by having virtually no budget at all though. I bought some XPS insulation from a nearby home improvement store. In Germany this material is marketed under the brand name Styrodur by BASF, a very light but reasonably stiff material. I first cut the insulation panel in a rough shape and then I used sandpaper to grind it down to the profile that I wanted to have. This particular blade that I'm making here is for a vault and not for the three blade hot by the way, but I just used the same method, I just don't have any footage of that anymore. Now I'm sure what I did there was still aerodynamically terrible. But let's just take a look at the results. The bases of the blades needed to be rather thick to attach the XPS to the flywheel, but the two bladed design benefited from making the blades a little thinner afterwards. But overall the two blade rudder was not very well made, mostly to me having not a lot of experience with XPS yet. I then made a number of improvements to the wind turbine as a whole and made a new rudder using the same technique, but now with three blades. And it really worked like a charm. In the meantime I also had installed this large five phase stepper motor as a generator and I also had made a much better yaw bearing from one of those caster wheels as I had explained a couple of minutes ago. The three bladed hod was the best result so far and I was really satisfied. Unfortunately there was a storm the next night, the turbine was flipped over due to the very improvised support structure and the rotor was damaged beyond repair. But I guess that just belongs to acting out the pioneer days of wind turbine making. But after this first setback I thought that I might just as well build a vault or vertical axis wind turbine now instead of rebuilding the broken three blade rotor. After all, one of the upsides of vaults is that they should be less sensitive to changes in the wind direction, which hordes usually are which constantly need to be readjusted in an environment like my backyard. And the most popular do-it-yourself vault design on the internet seems to be the Savonius rotor design named after a Finnish inventor. But as you can see here in the graph of all the well-known designs, it has the lowest maximum possible efficiency of only around 15%. 
the Darius rotor, this time named after a Frenchman, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, seems to be more promising. But its typical form was too complicated for me to reproduce, so I went for a variant known as the H rotor. And here is the first two-bladed H rotor, built from some aluminium parts, a curtain rod that I found in the house, and of course XPS insulation. With a very large diameter, it was rather slow, but worked quite consistently and I thought the design approach was promising. So based on that observation, I planned a three-blade H rotor. The big stepper motor was installed together with a bearing and a set of gears on a common base plate. And it was all put into an enclosure and here I'm demonstrating how it was supposed to work. The gears are increasing the rotational speed of the rather slow H rotor to generate sufficiently high voltages in the generator. Again a new board with rectifiers was made. Schottky diodes salvaged from ATX power supplies were used in order to minimize the voltage drop in the rectifiers. And here is the experimental 3 blade H rotor all set up. But as you can see there was no wind at all and I gave it a push with my hand just in order to film how the gears are turning. And well, at this point, I had put the better part of three months into this project, yet I was not seeing any results that would have justified any further investment into this idea. There was just no way that given the components I had, especially the kind of motors I was using as generators, that this project would ever help to save any kind of real money. Now, today I could just still make interesting videos about it, but back then I had just started with YouTube and was still completely unknown and had no idea that that would soon change. I simply had to abandon the project so that I could work on things that actually helped to pay the bills. But well, today I wish I still had a place where I could perform open air experiments like this one. And well, watching this old footage sure made me a little sentimental. But theoretically I could do this at my parents' property and bring this idea back to life. So if you're interested in that then let me know. And if you found this interesting then please give this video a like because I have no other way of knowing. Or if you want to actively support this channel then you can make a donation, links in the video description, or you could become a Patreon supporter on patreon.com slash tpai. See you soon guys. So my lads, the moral of the story, never give up on what you know is right. There's still enough time in future days to worry, let a dark one not make you lose your sight.